One of the key aspects of functional programming languages is the ability to pass around functions. You can treat functions just like any other values, and you can pass them into to other functions or methods, and you can have them passed back. When a function takes another function as an argument or returns one, it's called a higher order function. In this case, we're going to deal with higher order methods. The methods of collections that you don't just pass in values, like all the methods that we looked at just a minute ago. Instead, these are methods that you pass them functions. And those functions will kind of define what winds up happening. Higher order methods give you a lot of power. Now, there are two in particular that I want to start off with. So we have this array A of integers. It has eight different integers in somewhat random orders. Actually, I guess we'll go through and talk about three of the higher order methods first, that you, the ones that you will probably use the most, and then I'll talk about some others that are, that are helpful. In some ways, the one that's easiest to start off with, but that really is, is the least interesting of them, is for each. What for each does is it executes some function on every element of the collection. So you would do this when you want to have some side effect. In the, this case, I want to print out the values. So I want to see all the values that are in that array. There we go. So now of course we could have done that with a for loop as well, but this syntax is typically a little bit shorter. The other two methods are what are called map and filter then these really provide a lot of power because they do give you back a value. And so you can use map and filter to do interesting calculations and computations on collections without having to write a whole bunch of loops to do stuff for you. The idea of map is that map runs through and applies a function to every element. In some ways, just like for each did, except that function is supposed to give you back a result. And so whatever that result is, that gets added into a new collection. So I could, for example, multiply all of the elements in our array by two. Remember, this is the underscore syntax for a lambda expression. I guess I could have done this as i rocket i times two. That works. But this is one of those situations where The underscore syntax is much shorter, and at least I personally find it just as easy to read. I'm going to map all the elements of A to something times 2, okay, which winds up doubling all of the values. Anytime that you are thinking to yourself, I need to calculate something for all the elements in a collection, you should think of map. The last of kind of what I would consider the most important three higher order methods is filter. And so the purpose of filter is that filter also takes a function, but this function is supposed to give us back a boolean. So for example, maybe I want all the elements that are less than five. Well, once again, using the underscore syntax, I could express that as underscore less than five. And then I get one, two, three, four. I could also do a dot filter and get the even values by saying underscore modulo 2 equals 0. And I get the 6, 8, the 2, and the 4 out. And by combining map and filter, you're really able to do a lot of, of different things. You just have to, to try to adjust your thinking for what is the appropriate way to apply those, especially if you're used to using for loops instead. There are some other methods that are worth mentioning. Uh, there's a whole slew of methods that take what's called a predicate. Filter is one of them. So a function that gives you back a Boolean value is often referred to as a predicate. And so I, want to, I don't want all the even values. I just want to know how many there are. So I could say count all the values that are even. And it tells me that there are four of them. If you're familiar with math, there is these logical constructs of saying that something is true for all things or something is true for something in a set. We can say that as well. We can say, does there exist an element in here that is less than five? And of course, the answer to that, if I would actually a dot exists with an S, 
underscore less than five. Of course, that's true. Now, if I said a dot exists underscore greater than 10, well, my collection does not have anything that's greater than 10, so that comes back false. There is also a method called for all, not to be confused with for each. For each executes something, but doesn't really give you back anything, technically, it gives you back unit. For all gives you back a Boolean, and it tells you if some predicate is true for everything in the collection. So, underscore less than five, no, that's not true for all of them. I have some others. A dot for all underscore less than 10, that would, A dot for all underscore less than 10, would give me back true, because it, all of the elements are, are less than 10. Um, another helpful method is called find. So I want to find, let's remind ourselves what A looks like. I want to find the first uh, uh, multiple of four. How's that? A dot find underscore modulo four is zero. And there we go. It's the eight. Now, the return type here is significant. We'll come back to this in a, in a few videos because it's possible this thing isn't there. And so the return type has to deal with the possibility that the thing is, is not present. Um, I guess one other method that is worth mentioning is called partition. So there's both a filter, there's also a filter not, which is just the, the inverse of filter. You can actually do both of those at one time. So I could partition, and let's say I'm going to do less than five. This gives me back a tuple, everything that is less than five, everything that is not less than five. There are also some slightly more complex methods that are uh, folds and reduce methods. They run through the collection and kind of accumulate values as they go. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on those, but for example, a reduce it takes a function of two arguments, and if I were to just say plus in there, it will give me back the sum. Of course, in the case of the sum here, we could also do it with just calling sum, but the reduce is more powerful because I can do various other operations. Fold operations kind of do the same type of thing, building up a value, except I can also specify what value to start with. Lastly, I can ask for, we've seen that I can do the minimum value and the maximum value, but I could also ask for the minimum and the maximum based on some criteria. That's not necessarily useful for integers, but what if I had an array of strings and I want to find, let's call this words, Okay, well, it'll be called res84, or re, re, sorry, res83. I want to find the shortest one. Well, I can do res83 dot min by underscore dot length. So I want the element that has the shortest length, which is, of course, a. Uh, I couldn't do this. In fact, I can't do res83 dot min. Uh, I just get it, uh, I get the same answer here, but this is because of alphabetical ordering, because A comes before all the others. MinBy gives me the ability to do things based upon their, uh, whatever criteria I have, which can be useful if we have more complex uh, aggregate objects. So that's kind of an overview of a number of the, these higher order methods. There's actually quite a few more that I haven't mentioned here. Once again, if you go to the API, you can scroll through the API and see all the methods that we have, uh, that we can call on. And you really should try to get familiar with a number of those because understanding those and how they work can make your life much easier and can allow you to program things much more easily than if you are basically writing everything on your own.